As it ends with us heads towards a promising opening weekend at the box office, the movie is unexpectedly capturing attention on social media. and. Not all of it is positive. TikTok has been buzzing with rumors about a potential rift between star producer Blake Lively and her co-star Justin Baldoni, who also directed the film adaptation of Colleen Hoover's popular novel. The social media frenzy surrounding It Ends With Us is reminiscent of the online scrutiny seen during the release of films like Don't Worry Darling, remember the infamous Spitgate, or even Madam Web. Fans and followers are dissecting the movie's press appearances with the dedication of a secret spy. Sources have informed The Hollywood Reporter that tensions arose during the post-production phase, leading to the creation of two different cuts of the movie. The TikTok investigation into It Ends With Us kicked off when fans noticed Baldoni's conspicuous absence from joint promotion events, the lack of photos featuring both Lively and Baldoni at the New York premiere, and the fact that neither Lively, Hoover, nor other cast members follow Baldoni on Instagram, though he does follow them. This raised eyebrows, especially since Hoover and Baldoni had previously appeared together on each other's Instagram accounts during the movie's development. Social media users also began speculating that Lively enlisted her husband, Ryan Reynolds to take control of the film's creative direction. This theory gained traction when Lively revealed at the world premiere that Reynolds had written a key rooftop scene early in the movie. Quote, we help each other. He works on everything I do, I work on everything he does. So his wins, his celebrations are mine, and mine are his, she explained. The film's script was penned by Christy Hall. According to multiple insiders, while Reynolds did contribute significant dialogue for the scene, he, of course, did not write the entire thing. Beyond that, Reynolds had little time to focus on his wife's film as he was deeply immersed in working with director Sean Levy on Deadpool and Wolverine. Deadpool and Wolverine has been one of the most talked about films in recent years, bringing together two of the most beloved characters from the Marvel Universe. The film, a sequel in the wildly successful Deadpool franchise, features Reynolds reprising his role as the wisecracking, fourth-wall-breaking anti-hero, while Hugh Jackman returned as Wolverine, much to the delight of fans. The chemistry between Reynolds and Jackman both on and off-screen has been a major selling point, contributing to the film's massive box office success and critical acclaim. Blake Lively herself had a highly anticipated and rumored role in the movie, and although her face was never revealed in the film, she did have a few speaking lines as she played the character of Lady Pool. Ryan and Blake weren't the only members of the Reynolds family seen in the Deadpool cast, however. Lively and Reynolds are parents to four children, daughters James, Inez, and Betty, and a son named Olin. Three of them make appearances in the movie. In Deadpool and Wolverine, Lady Pool has a baby, fittingly named Baby Pool, portrayed by the couple's youngest child, Olin. Inez takes on the role of Kid Pool, and and even has a speaking line. Their eldest daughter, nine-year-old James, also makes a brief appearance as a screaming mutant. This is all to say this has clearly been an exceptionally busy year for the Reynolds family. With Deadpool and Wolverine enjoying tremendous success, it's easy to see why Reynolds was so focused on this project, leaving limited time to dedicate to It Ends With Us. She reportedly had enough influence to commission her own version of the movie. Multiple sources revealed that Lively requested a cut of the movie from editor Shane Reed, who also worked on Deadpool and Wolverine, and edited the Lively-directed music video for Taylor Swift's I Bet You Think About Me. It remains unclear if any part of this cut made it into the final version, which was credited to editors Una Flaherty and Rob Sullivan. One insider downplayed the rumors of conflict, noting that it's not uncommon for multiple versions of a film to emerge during post 
production, and the team ultimately agreed on the final cut. Representatives for Lively and Baldoni have not responded to requests for comment. Baldoni has acknowledged Lively's creative contributions in interviews, but has not commented on the alleged competing cuts of the movie. He did mention stepping back at times to let the women on set take the lead, as the film centers around a woman's perspective and addresses the sensitive topic of domestic violence. Hoover has published a sequel, the 2022 novel It Starts With Us. Baldoni has not committed to directing another film in the franchise, although his character plays a key role in the sequel. It remains unclear whether the studio will be able to bring the team back together for another installment. In the end, the buzz surrounding It Ends With Us might fade once the film hits theaters, but unlike Don't Worry Darling and Madam Web, it's expected to be a financial success, projected to earn $23 million or more during its opening weekend, a solid result for a movie with a $25 million budget. And if pre-sales are any indication, that number could definitely climb even higher. In the world of Colleen Hoover film adaptations, It Ends With Us isn't the only movie on the docket. Verity marks the third adaptation of a Colleen Hoover novel. The first was Confess, a romance novel published in 2015, which became a TV series in 2017. The series aired for one season on Go90 and consisted of seven episodes, starring Katie Leclerc and Ryan Cooper. The second adaptation, obviously, is It Ends With Us, which premiered in theaters on August 9th. While many details about Verity are still unknown, it remains one of Hoover's most popular books. With over a million copies sold and frequent appearances on bestseller lists, this highly anticipated adaptation is unlikely to keep us waiting for too long. Verity has already become one of the most eagerly awaited adaptations, even though filming hasn't even started yet. Since this bestseller is still in the early stages of development, details are limited. However, there are a few things that we do know about the upcoming Colleen Hoover adaptation. At this moment in time, Verity does not have a release date. Since production hasn't begun, it's unclear whether the film will be released in a few years or much further down the line. The earliest we might see Verity in theaters is likely 2025 or 2026. The production team may wait to see how the movie adaptation of It Ends With Us performs at the box office. If it's a big hit, they might expedite production to capitalize on that success. The It Ends With Us trailer garnered over 128 million views in the first 24 hours, which definitely bodes well for its box office potential. Verity shares similarities with films like Gone Girl, A Simple Favor, Rebecca, and Vertigo, creating a sense of distrust between the viewer and the characters. If the film leans into these elements, it could become a very gripping thriller with plenty of twists and turns. The story follows Loan Ashley, a writer struggling in her career, who gets a life-changing opportunity to ghostwrite for a best-selling author. After a car accident leaves Verity Crawford in a coma, Loan moves into her home and begins to grow close to Verity's husband, Jeremy. As she settles in, Loan uncovers dark secrets that blur the lines between truth and fiction. The narrative toys with the reader's sense of reality, and the film could explore whether Loan's imagination is at play, or if there's something more sinister going on. The book's intriguing storyline already has a very cinematic feel, which should make the transition to the screen even smoother. Hilary Seitz is currently set to write the Verity screenplay. Her previous work includes Christopher Nolan's Insomnia, Eagle Eye, and the recent Sandra Bullock and Viola Davis film The Unforgivable, which also featured a very thought-provoking ending. Although we know Verity is in the works, many details remain under wraps. It's difficult to predict the cast for Verity due to the film's very high potential. Casting news for these characters will likely spark discussions similar to the buzz surrounding Blake Lively's casting in It Ends With Us. Number 10, Rose McGowan. So let's talk about the show Charmed for a second, a solid series that was on air for basically 10 years. The series followed three sisters that discover they are descendants of a long line of good female witches and are destined to fight against the forces of evil. Yes, it was a very fun show, however, just because you play sisters on set does not mean that you're always going to be close in real life. Rose McGowan and Alyssa Milano had a very public altercation that resulted in a little incident on set being shared with the world. Rose claimed that Alyssa threw a fit in front of the 
of the crew yelling, they don't pay me enough to do this stuff. Only she didn't say stuff. She called Alyssa's behavior appalling, claiming she cried every time that the show got renewed for another season because it just meant more time on a toxic set. Alyssa never shared her comments on the situation, confirming what she was being accused of. Number 9. Richard Gere Richard Gere is one of those actors that doesn't really act. Sometimes people just get hired for films because they have a face for it or the style. For Richard, he did not have enough class in Moxie to keep a handle on his role in the film Lords of the Flatbush. He was casted to star a line Rocky himself, Sylvester Stallone, and according to Sly, the two didn't get along at all. Their beef was strong and long lasting throughout the entire production until it finally came to a head one day when Richard was a bit too into one scene and he actually grabbed Sylvester pretty aggressively by the collar. When Sly told him to lay off, he laid in instead. The scene was being filmed on Coney Island and when the actors took a minute to take a break, they tried to break each other. Sly was eating a hot dog alone in his car, which sounds pretty peaceful, and suddenly Richard stormed in, joined him with half of a chicken dripping in mustard, and despite his warnings about the mustard, seriously, it dripped all over his pants. In true Rocky fashion, he elbowed Richard in the face, threw him out of his car, and the altercation resulted in Richard being fired from the project. Oh no, they had to decide between Richard Gere and Rocky. I wonder how quick that decision was. Number 8, Selma Blair. It's funny that this entry involves Charlie Sheen getting a woman fired when he himself has been fired from so many projects because of, well, several reasons. After being fired from Two and a Half Men, Sheen returned to the acting world, headlining his own show called Anger Management. It premiered in 2012 with cast featuring Hellboy alumni Selma Blair playing his colleague and friend with benefits on the show. However, Sheen's terrible behavior continued to haunt him from his Two and a Half Men days. Blair was very vocal on her problems with Charlie, especially his messy work ethic. Charlie heard and he was having none of that, so he threatened to quit the show if Blair was going to remain a part of the cast. Sheen got his way and Blair was let go after starring in 54 episodes. The show didn't last long though, who would have guessed that a messy actor being the lead was a bad idea? It got cancelled in 2014. Next up, 7, Shanine Doherty. Unfortunately for Shanine Doherty, she gained quite the reputation in Hollywood for being fired due to issues with her co-stars. She may or may not be making another appearance on this list, who knows, guess you'll have to stick around to find out. For the first entry, we're going to look back to the very popular series, Teen Drama 90210, a series following the lives of the Walsh family as they move from Minneapolis to Beverly Hills. Doherty played the character Brenda Walsh, with her character eventually befriending several students at Beverly Hills High, including Donna Martin, played by Tori Spelling. The series was a hit after its initial season, however, with increased popularity came massive egos. Doherty and Spelling started clashing on set constantly, adding additional drama to the production team that really just didn't need to be there. Considering Tori's father, Aaron Spelling, was the producer on the show, it's pretty simple to piece together what happened. Doherty claimed that she was officially let go for having a haircut that messed up the continuity of the show, but a wig could have fixed that, so better believe Tori Spelling told her papa to boot her from the series. Number 6, Edward Norton. As we all know, Edward Norton didn't last long as the Incredible Hulk in the MCU, only being in one movie in 2008. By the way, I've read some of the comments, and no, Edward Norton was not the first person to play the Hulk on screen. The honor goes to Lou Ferrigno and Bill Bixby from the original series, and don't you dare get me started on Eric Bana, looking like he's farting every time he turns into the Hulk. The 2008 film was success, but not a massive box office goat. The studio were at odds, and they wanted to keep using the Hulk and incorporate him into the Avengers, but Edward Norton was becoming increasingly difficult to work with. When he was contacted to keep playing the character, he demanded more money from the studio. However, he was already on thin ice following his time filming The Incredible Hulk. While not some wild on-set meltdown, Norton did make some pretty odd choices. For instance, as part of his contract, he was allowed to rewrite the script as much as he wanted, but it still needed to be approved. So he wrote new scripts over and over again until we got the 2008 Incredible Hulk movie with some of Ed's ideas baked into the final script. Kevin Feige claims that the choice to part ways with Ed was not based on money, but instead on Marvel just wishing to hire an actor that embodies the creative and collaboration side of their talented members. Essentially, he was like, eh, Mark Ruffalo's nicer than you and he doesn't write his scripts, so bye bye. This ended up being a great decision on both parts though, because Mark Ruffalo is fantastic as Bruce Banner and the Hulk, and Edward went on to make several high quality films, including a few collaborations with Wes Anderson. Moonrise Kingdom would not have been the same without Edward Norton as Scoutmaster Ward. Number five, Anne Hathaway. So, fun fact that I was unaware of until today Anne Hathaway was almost a secondary lead in one of the most universally loved Seth Rogen movies of all time. Knocked Up from 2007 follows Seth Rogen and Katherine Heigl as they prepare for the arrival of an unplanned baby after a one night stand. The cast was packed with stellar comedians. 
comedians like Paul Rudd, Jonah Hill, Leslie Mann, so many more. And the cast almost featured an up and coming actor at the time, Anne Hathaway. Anne is famous these days for roles in movies like Princess Diary, Interstellar, and Ocean's 8. These days, she's considered to be at the top of the A list. In 2013, she even took home her first Oscar for Best Supporting Actress. Now, before this, though, she actually agreed to be in Knocked Up because she thought the script was great and that Seth Rogen, you know, is Seth Rogen. You work with him every chance you can. However, she eventually decided not to participate in the film after one issue with the script became cause for concern. The scene in question was one of the final moments in the film, which, for those of you who have seen the movie, know is pretty graphic. The birthing scene in Knocked Up ended up being a combination of Catherine acting and some close up clips of her cookie. Anne read that part and decided that her first role in a major comedy movie should maybe be something else. Although it was confirmed that it was not going to be her bits and bobs on display, she has a no birthday suit clause. It worked out for everyone though, because Catherine did a great job despite hating the set apparently. And Anne Hathaway is one of the biggest movie stars to date, so good for her. Number four, Dennis Hopper. Dennis Hopper is one of the groundbreaking actors and directors from the 1960s and 70s New Hollywood, eventually finding his niche in the early 90s, playing villains in movies like Speed, Waterworld, and the live action Mario Brothers movie where he plays Bowser. Yes, that exists. No, it's not good. So it came as no surprise when he was casted to play Kristoff, the all powerful TV producer controlling Truman Burbank's life in the movie The Truman Show. The cast was incredible and included Hollywood heavyweight Jim Carrey as the titular Truman. Anyone with a brain cell would have been excited to be a part of this film, still considered to be one of his best dramatic performances. However, two days into filming his scenes for Kristoff, which were only expected to take about 10 days to film, Hopper was unceremoniously let go from the set. Apparently, Dennis had a contract in place with producer Scott Rudden that he would be fired should his work be unsatisfactory. He must have been pretty bad in the role, as the director Peter Weir has been described as extremely reluctant to ever remove an actor from a movie. Reports later surfaced that Hopper was basically half asleep while playing the character, and while Kristoff wasn't written to be like a manic man or anything, he did require some effort to be properly pulled off. Ultimately, Ed Harris stepped in to play the role after production had been desperately trying to replace Dennis to avoid having the film be shut down entirely. Thankfully, that never happened, and The Truman Show has gone on to be one of the most depressingly heartfelt Jim Carrey performances ever. Oh, and Ed actually got nominated for an Oscar, so sorry, Dennis, looks like it was a good move. Number three, Jean Claude Van Damme. The Belgian actor, Jean Claude Van Damme, was just on the verge of coming into his own career as the Muscles from Brussels when he landed a job opposite of Arnold Schwarzenegger in 1987's action flick, Predator. This sounded like the perfect casting choice. Jean would have worked alongside the likes of Carl Weathers and Jesse Ventura. While this may have turned out cool, the reality was that Jean wasn't casted to play one of the Marines at all. Instead, he was casted to play the titular Predator himself. The special effects artist behind the project called the experience with Jean as a hilarious comedy of errors, in which no party knew exactly what the other was expecting. Apparently, nobody actually told him that the role was basically just a glorified stuntman. They were prepared to direct him to just hop around like a frog, but Jean was obviously confused and upset with that choice. According to him, he had just gotten off the boat and was under the impression that he was going to be showcasing his martial arts skills to the world, but instead, he was reduced to a massive, slow-moving alien with dreadlocks. To the surprise of absolutely nobody, Van Damme was furious and dispirited about spending the entire movie cooped up in a clunky and often ridiculous looking suit, and he was ultimately fired and replaced with Kevin Peter Hall. The idea that he was just on set being like, I can barely move in this thing, it just, it makes me so happy. Number two, Janet Hubert. Will Smith got his big break in the acting world thanks to the success of the sitcom Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. It's a show following Will as the titular prince, living with a wealthy family in Bel-Air, surrounded by cousins, uncles, and of course, Aunt Vivian. In season one, Aunt Viv was played by a woman named Janet Hubert Witten, but as a lot of people know, she was recasted after an on-set feud with Will Smith went a little bit too far. According to Will, Janet viewed him as an antagonist in her life. She had been in the business for years, and suddenly Will Smith popped into her life, and she had a tinge of jealousy towards him because he got into town, got a gig. Well, hey, that's what happens when you're good. She was trying to convince the producers to give her character more screen time and allow her to breathe on camera, but they said no because it wasn't the Aunt Viv show. She fought back hard, but it was ultimately decided that she would be asked to sit out the rest of the series and was replaced by Daphne Maxwell Reed, who is Aunt Viv. Number one, Thomas Gibson. Thomas made a name for himself, starring as one of the leads of the series Criminal Minds. He was on the show for a few years, and in that time, he made quite a few problems for those unfortunate 
fortunate enough to be staff members of the series. There were a few issues over the years that would have warranted some action like screaming at producers and writers for not doing a good job. But the incident that got him kicked off of the show for good involved, well, a kick. In, in 2016, Thomas was swiftly fired from the series after an incident with a writer named Virgil Williams. An internal investigation revealed that Thomas kicked Virgil one day during production of an episode that Gibson was actually directing. And as I said, this isn't the first incident on set that really should have resulted in some kind of punishment because three years earlier in 2013, he pleaded no contest to no no juice related reckless driving after being arrested under suspicion of DUI. And three years before that, he allegedly shoved an assistant director, Ian Wolf, during a late night location scene. The, that led to the studio ordering Gibson to take eight hours of anger management. According to most people on the set, Thomas was a wild card. Some days he was friendly and accommodating, and the next he went ballistic. Number 10, Tom Hardy versus Charlize Theron. Mad Max Fury Road is a forgotten gem in cinema history. It featured little to no CGI despite having some insane visuals, and it also featured some stellar performances from its cast, including Nicholas Holt, Charlize Theron, and Tom Hardy. Charlize and Tom played the main characters, Furiosa and Max, and while their on-screen characters ended up working together in the end, on set there was a very different vibe. Tom had a bad habit of showing up late all the time. Meanwhile, Charlize was a brand new mother who would be there on time every day while her kids were forced to be taken care of by someone else. In a book called Blood, Sweat, and Chrome, The Wild and True Story of Mad Max Fury Road, writer Kyle Buchanan shared an instance on set between Charlize and Tom. Everyone was on set at 8 a.m. ready to shoot except for Mr. Hardy. But to make a point, Charlize took her place and stayed there until Tom showed up. Three hours later, she didn't move a muscle and according to the crew she was beyond furious. When Tom finally showed up, she asked him how he could be so disrespectful and said that they should find this CNX Tuesday $100,000 for every minute that he's held up the crew. Yeah, she didn't say CNX Tuesday, but the word she did say set Tom off. He rushed up to her and pulled out the whole, what'd you say to me? Thing, you know, like, oh, a big tough guy, I can't hear anything. Overall, Charlize felt very threatened by Tom and had to have an assistant follow her around on set as a buffer between the two. When the shoot wrapped, the tension was gone and things seemed to have gotten better, but the difficult shoot combined with the stress of the project is most likely the reason that there was never a Mad Max 2. Number 9, Ryan Gosling versus Rachel McAdams. The Notebook is considered to be one of the greatest romantic movies ever made in Hollywood. Oddly enough, the on-screen couple did not get along at all during the shoot. They would constantly fight on set and seemed to have completely different ideas on how several scenes should be played out. One day in particular was pretty exciting for anyone who wasn't involved, you know, drama watchers who were sipping their tea. Ryan called over the director and demanded that Rachel be replaced by another actress to read her lines with him. In front of 150 crew members, he claimed that Rachel wasn't giving him anything to work with and the two would constantly yell on set. Their toxic on set feud somehow morphed into a toxic relationship that lasted for two years. Anyone who worked on the set blames them for constant schedule setbacks and creating just an overall difficult work environment. Number eight, LL Cool J versus Jamie Foxx. Jamie Foxx has been a huge star in the world of Hollywood over the years, working with several acclaimed directors in every genre under the sun, but like most actors, Jamie had to start somewhere. And that somewhere was in the film Any Given Sunday from 1999, alongside Al Pacino, Cameron Diaz, Dennis Quaid, and of course, LL Cool J. Cool J and Jamie played teammates in the football-centric flick, and not only do their characters constantly fight on screen, but behind the scenes, they had an actual brawl that ended in Miami County Police being called in. During one scene, the two were scripted to fight and filmed the first two takes as planned. However, some offset beef made its way in front of the camera when Jamie struck Cool J for real, splitting his lip open and an all-out beatdown took place, leaving Jamie unconscious and in the hospital. They had to stop production because they weren't sure when Jamie would actually be able to return and film his scenes. When Fox did return to the set, it was with a small crew of friends and his manager. Waiting to greet them was LL Cool J and half of Brooklyn, according to the director, who stated that the tension was only settled after the real-life football players that the characters were based on came on set to defuse the situation. Number seven, Ryan Reynolds versus Wesley Snipes. Ryan Reynolds is known for many things. He's got his toe dipped into the world of adult beverages, 
wireless cell phone coverage, and he's even a soccer coach. Or football for our friends in the UK. One of his most iconic roles as an actor is of course the Merc with the Mouth, Mr. Deadpool himself. However, in 2004, Ryan was a part of a different Marvel movie. As some may know, the original Marvel movie that started this whole live action comic trend was the Blade Trilogy, starring Wesley Snipes as the titular vampire hunter. By the time the third movie of the franchise rolled around, Wesley Snipes was just kind of done with working on set. He hated the way the franchise was turning out, and all of his creative suggestions were quickly shut down. His main problem was the fact that Blade Trinity was written as like a straight up comedy movie when the previous entries were more dark, action based movies, filled with gore and some pretty stellar fight sequences. So when Van Wilder was cast to be his co star, he kind of gave up. He famously refused to film several scenes unless he was allowed to wear his shades on set. Apparently, he was like micro napping during takes because he just didn't care anymore. Ryan played a big part in his difficulty enjoying the shoot. Apparently, he made it his mission to make West snap. He'd constantly do bits, push things too far, and just the general Ryan Reynolds chaos that we're all used to at this point. At the end of the day, Blade Trinity ended up burying the franchise and was one of the most chaotic and toxic films ever made in 2004. Ooh, number 6. Vin Diesel vs. The Rock Remember everybody, family. That's it. That's, the, that's my intro. Dwayne and Vin Diesel met on set of the fifth Fast and Furious movie, Fast Five very creative title. This was Vin Diesel's fifth movie, but it was Dwayne's first, not just in the franchise, but in the acting world in general. At first, everything seemed to be okay with these guys on set. Fast Five made a lot of money, and they asked Dwayne to return for a six and seven. However, something changed in 2016, when in a now deleted post, Dwayne called one of his fellow Cast 7 co-stars a candied bum bum. He didn't say bum bum, but I'm not allowed to say that real word on the internet, so I must speak like a toddler. He actually said a word that rhymes with grass. Rumors began to fly that this was more than likely referring to Vin Diesel. Rumors proven only a week after that post was made. Following the premiere of Fate of the Furious, Johnson posted on Instagram thanking all of his fellow cast members by name, but he left Vin out of the equation. It was later confirmed by Fast and Furious co-star Michelle Rodriguez that there was a massive amount of tension on set of the film. There were bros at first, but as the time went on and the franchise evolved, so did their egos. They fought constantly over who should receive the most screen time and who was the real lead of the franchise. You know, Toxic masculinity and all that. To keep both actors happy, Johnson was given a spin-off in which he co-starred as the lead alongside Jason Statham, and Vin Diesel was left right where he belongs with his family. I know mean, it's a bad impression, but it's a fun word to say in his voice. Number five, Bill Murray versus Lucy Liu. Does anybody else just get the most hardcore Charlie's Angels flashbacks when they see these two together? Huh? No? Eh? Fair. Sony's first foray into the world of Charlie's Angels was a massive success when it was released, starring Cameron Diaz, Drew Barrymore, and Lucy Liu as the titular Angels. The movie was filled with action, a little bit of comedy, and one of the strangest performances ever delivered by Crispin Glover. Seriously, that guy needs help. One interesting addition to the cast was the inclusion of Ghostbusters alumni Bill Murray as the man behind the microphone, Mr. Bosley. Apparently, the set was anything but a comedy after Bill found out a scene had been rewritten without his knowledge. In an interview with the news outlet Deadline, Lucy Liu spoke up about her time on set and the situation surrounding Bill's outburst. Apparently, Bill was away for a family event when a scene needed to be reshot for the movie. But instead of using a stand-in, it was decided that the scene could be filmed without Murray's character being involved. So it went on without him. When he returned to find that the change had been made while he was gone, he was furious and reportedly shouted at half of the crew, including Lucy herself. At first, she wasn't sure why he was aiming his comments at her. She didn't write the scene, she wasn't the director, so she asked if Bill was talking to her specifically, which apparently sent him into a full-blown meltdown. She decided to speak out on Bill's behavior on set, and he was ultimately written out of the sequel. Lucy is proud for speaking her mind despite being a relatively unknown actor at the time, and is very glad that Bill's career seems to have suffered for it, because Lucy was just the first of many celebrities to comment on his behavior. We'll save that for another time. Number 4. Will Smith vs. Janet Hubert Will Smith got his big break in the acting world thanks to his successful time on the hit sitcom Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. The show followed Will as the titular prince, living with his wealthy family in Bel-Air, surrounded by cousins, uncles, and of course, Aunt Viv. In season one, Aunt Viv was played by a woman named Janet Hubert Witten, who, as many know, was recasted after an onset feud with Will Smith just went a little bit too far. According to Will, Janet viewed him as the antagonist of her life. She had been in the business for years when suddenly this man popped into her life, and she held a tinge of jealousy 
mercy towards Will as he just walked into town and he got a gig. Well, that's what happens when you're good at your job, Janet. She was trying to convince the producers to give her character more screen time and allow her to breathe on camera, but they said no because it was not the Aunt Viv show. She fought back hard, but it was ultimately decided that she would be asked to sit out for the rest of the series and be replaced by Daphne Maxwell Reed, who is the Aunt Viv that everybody knows and loves. Number three. Tom Hardy versus Shia LaBeouf. Making a return on this list is Mr. Tom Hardy, but this time it's with Shia. This was an onset feud that was innocent from the perspective of the actors, but not the people who were making their movie. In 2012, Shia and Tom starred in a period piece crime drama called Lawless. It was a pretty solid movie featuring stellar performances from both of its leading men. In 2019, on an episode of the popular talk show Hot Ones, Shia addressed the rumors that he had knocked out his on-screen partner Tom during the shoot. According to Shia, the two were closer than people think and acted more like college buddies than enemies. Shia claims that the two would wrestle a lot on set and that it would sometimes distract people from their work. The rumor that he knocked Tom out was actually started by Tom after he fell down the stairs one night and apparently he was getting ready for his role as Bane in Christopher Nolan's third Batman movie at the time and Shia claims that the main reason he wanted people to think he was in a fight was, again, big tough guy. Their feud may have been innocent between themselves, but to everyone else, on the outside, Tom Hardy was about to pile drive Shia LaBeouf every five minutes. Number two, Ray Fisher versus Joss Whedon. Ray played a major role in the 2017 DC movie Justice League as Cyborg. Not only was this the first live action iteration of the character for film, but he was also the first black superhero in a leading role in DC. According to Fisher, he was mindful of this and he delivered the best performance that he could, and honestly, it was a great performance. There have been way worse actors involved with DC, and Cyborg Cyborg was one of the best parts of the 2017 version. Now, I keep saying that because as some may not know, the original director of the movie, Zack Snyder, was forced to drop out of the shoot midway through production due to a personal tragedy. The studio decided to bring in Avengers director Joss Whedon to finish the project, and at first he was just supposed to direct the movie, but he ended up rewriting most of the script and reshooting several of the scenes already finished by Zack. This is where the tension started. Joss did not appreciate any outside input on his script and Ray was a very vocal performer who wanted to stick to the original vision that Zack Snyder had. A vision that we actually got to see in 2021 thanks to the Snyder cut of the film being released. It's two more hours, but it's way better. Ray claimed that Joss was not only dismissive towards his ideas, but that he was an absolute monster to work with. Following the release of the film, Fisher voiced his complaints to DC and Warner Brothers, who opened a brief investigation into the situation, but quickly dismissed the case, claiming that there was insufficient evidence to prove he was telling the truth. Thank Thankfully, several of his co-stars and crew members backed up those claims that Joss was a very angry, racist, and just manipulative boss, creating an extremely toxic environment on set. The backlash from fans, combined with the hashtag Snyder Cut, allowed Warner Brothers to finish Zack's original vision for the project and release a four-hour Snyder Cut in 2021. Not only is Cyborg's storyline much better in this version, but the project overall is considered to be one of the best DC movies ever made. And at number one, James Frank versus Tyrese Gibson. So this feud was brought to my attention by a fellow host here at the studio, and I had never actually heard of this movie before today, but, but once I found out it was between James Franco and Tyrese, oh, we had to include it on this list. These two start opposite each other in a 2005 dramatic piece called Annopolis. The story follows Franco's character wanting to attend the titular Naval Academy and entering into a boxing tournament against some of the Navy's best and brightest. His main opponent is Tyrese Gibson. Throughout the majority of the filming, James and Tyrese would regularly practice the choreography for the final fight of the film. Now, method acting is one thing, when you just pretend to be someone else all the time and that's it. But it's different when you're literally punching your co-star for real. Instead of the normal film choreography allowing actors to fake hit each other, Franco was throwing real punches without warning. Gibson tried to be civil at first and asked him to lighten up. Franco ignored him and just continued to box his heart out. When asked about the incident in interviews, Franco defended himself by saying that he was aware that he made the set difficult at times and claimed to be so wrapped up in his role that he probably wasn't as friendly as he could 
be. Gibson, however, holds a massive grudge towards Franco, claiming that he would never step foot in the same room as this man ever again. Good news for Tyrese, James got canceled and Fast 11's coming soon. Number 10, Will Smith and Margot Robbie. In 2013, Star Magazine published a bombshell allegation that Will Smith was caught cheating with his co-star Margot Robbie when they worked together on the movie Focus. The report actually claimed that in photo booth pictures that they found and published on their cover, Will appeared to be shirtless and Margot lifted up her own shirt to reveal her lingerie. The magazine also claimed that after they pulled the curtain back to take the pictures, they were getting very touchy-feely with each other in the dark. The scandal was massive at the time because Will is married to Jada Pinkett Smith and back then they had yet to admit to having an open relationship. But the rumors soon died down as E! News revealed that the pictures were commissioned by a production and that the entire cast and crew saw them being taken. It also came out that Will and Margot are absolutely just friends and there was nothing else going on between them. Even Margot was quick to deny everything on Twitter, quote, there's absolutely no truth to the ridiculous rumor. It's disappointing that goofing around on set could be taken so out of context. Well, people do tend to jump to conclusions. Number nine, Dominic West and Lily James. The actors were at the height of scandal when they were photographed getting cozy in Rome, all while filming their new series of Pursuit of Love in 2020. The pictures show the stars kissing, sitting at a cafe, standing on the Spanish steps, and riding tandem on a scooter looking very much to be on a date. Although Lily was single at the time, Dominic has been married to Catherine Fitzgerald for 10 years, and they have four children together. A source told The Sun that when Catherine saw the pictures, she was devastated and tried to get a hold of her husband, but he wasn't answering his phone. She was reportedly shocked by the whole thing because she didn't realize anything was going on. But only a few days later, there was a photo taken out the front of the couple's home with a note saying, our marriage is strong and we're very much still together. Thank you. Since the incident, James has kept quiet and canceled various interviews to promote her latest film, Rebecca, which is probably a good decision considering the fact that both parties have not yet publicly talked about their affair since it occurred. Number eight, Chad Michael Murray in Paris Hilton. In 2003, Chad Michael Murray and Sophia Bush fell in love while filming the TV series One Tree Hill. Two years later, they were married. However, they separated just five months later when rumors swirled that Chad had cheated on his wife with Paris Hilton, his co-star on the film House of Wax. During the time he and Paris both worked on the horror film together, they reportedly had an affair, according to Backstreet Boy Nick Carter, who was dating Paris at the time. But after separating, Chad and Sophia still had to keep working working together for another three years on One Tree Hill. If that's not awkward, I don't know what is. It wasn't until 2011 that the actor decided to rethink the way in which he was living his whole life. Quote, when you're young and you're thrown into something that I was definitely not ready for, I'm human and I screw up. But his ex-wife definitely took the whole affair much harder and it's clear that his actions really affected her in the long term. In 2017, she wrote in Cosmopolitan that the scandal was a massive event in her life and and the trauma of it was amplified by how public it became. She has also said that she feels the marriage was a joke and it did nothing but reduce her to a Hollywood statistic. Ouch. Number seven, Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie. Jen and Brad got married in 2000 in a lavish Malibu wedding and things were perfect for the Hollywood id couple until they suddenly announced their divorce in 2005. What happened exactly? Well, long story short is, Brad met Angelina for the first time on the set of Mr. and Mrs. Smith and the rest is history. Apparently the movie was filled with so much romantic tension, it was impossible for the two stars not to fall for each other. I mean, Mr. and Mrs. Smith is probably the sexiest spy movie to ever exist, so it's easy to see how everything went down. But the problem was that Brad was still married to Jen. But he didn't let that stop him, and they allegedly still got together despite his marriage. To add insult to injury, he said about his marriage to Jen, quote, I was trying to pretend the marriage was something that it wasn't. I'm satisfied with making true choices and finding the woman I love, Angie, and building a family that I love so much. That sounds pretty harsh, but it turned out that Brad and Angelina's relationship wasn't just a fling, and they actually went on to date for many, many years and had a large family before finally getting married in 2014. The love triangle was one of the biggest celebrity scandals of the early 2000s, and it still dominates the tabloids to this day. Number six, Harrison Ford and Carrie Fisher. The actress and writer Carrie Fisher was never one to hold back when she had something to say, and in 2016, she shared a fascinating piece of history in her own memoir called The Princess Diarist. According to Carrie, she had a brief but very intense Affair 
with her Star Wars co-star Harrison Ford while they were filming the movie in 1976. But what's really quite troubling is that People magazine reported that she was just 19 years old when the three month affair took place, while Harrison was 36 years old and married to his wife of 15 years, Mary Marquard. To make matters worse, the couple also shared two kids together. In terms of sneaking around, Carrie actually said, quote, it was Han and Leia during the week and Carrie and Harrison during the weekend. She also explained to The Guardian that the affair between them had eventually come down to unreciprocated love. She said that she'll always feel something for him. The Star Wars actress was so young at the time that they got together, and although she must have known it was wrong, it's hard to say that the blame rests completely on her. What's even sadder is that after Carrie died in 2016, Harrison never fully confessed to the affair, probably more out of shame for cheating on his wife. Number 5. Ewan McGregor and Mary Elizabeth Winstead The co-stars brought their on-screen romance into the real world after working together on the FX series Fargo. The pair appeared on season 3 of the anthology crime drama, which debuted in April of 2017. Only a month later, the actress announced on social media that she had split from her husband of 7 years, Riley Stearns. Following her separation, Winstead was spotted on a date, hooking up with McGregor in London. And cheating rumours were flying because although she was single, he was very much not. The train spotting actor was still married to Eve Mavrakis at the time, with whom he shares four children. After the Emmy winner was spotted getting cozy with Winstead, fans began to wonder about the status of his marriage. But it wasn't until January of 2018 that his now ex-wife filed for divorce. But while the two managed to keep their romance relatively private, their relationship raised eyebrows even among their family members. In fact, in August of 2018, McGregor's daughter Clara had some strong feelings on the new relationship at the time. She took to Instagram to comment on a Mary Elizabeth Winstead fan page, quote, most beautiful and talented woman on earth? Oh man, y'all are delusional. This girl is a piece of trash. Wow. Number 4. Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman Although it's been over for decades, Nicole Kidman's marriage to Tom Cruise is still one of Hollywood's most talked about relationships. Cruise met Nicole Kidman on the set of the movie Days of Thunder, and the pair were instantly smitten with one another, and they soon started engaging in a torrid love affair. But at the time of meeting, you guessed it, the Top Gun actor was still married to Mimi Rogers, whom he wed in 1987. As it became clear that the affair was more than just a simple fling, Tom divorced his first wife in February of 1990 and less than one year later, he exchanged vows with Nicole in December of 1990. They even adopted two children, Isabella Jane and Connor Anthony, and eventually went on to make two more movies together as a couple. But as we all know, their marriage was far from perfect and they ended up splitting a decade later in 2001. Looking back on the divorce, Nicole said, quote, It took me a very long time to heal. It was a shock to my system. We were in a bubble, just the two of us. We became very very dependent on one another. Number 3. Billy Crudup and Claire Danes The massive scandal started in late 2003. Billy and his girlfriend of 8 years, Mary Louise Parker, who at the time was about 7 months pregnant with his son, broke up. The New York Post reported that the actor had moved on with his stage beauty co-star, Claire Danes, who was only 24 at the time. In the summer of that year, the former co-stars had been spotted getting cozy all over New York City, and even had a very cute looking courtside date filled with PDA. But Billy wasn't the only cheater in that situation as Claire also ended up breaking the heart of her longtime boyfriend Ben Lee to be with the actor. Their love affair didn't last long however and it's clear that all the heartbreak wasn't even worth it because they ended up splitting up just 3 years later. Naturally, the ultra private couple didn't discuss the reason behind their breakup but the tabloids were happy to do so for them. Several magazines even claimed that Danes had left Billy for Hugh Dancy but we'll never really know what happened. Years later, Claire said, quote, I was just in love with him and needed to explore that. I was 24, I didn't quite know what those consequences would be. Number 2. Morena Bakarin and Ben McKenzie The Homeland actress furiously denied rumours that she had been cheating on her husband at the time, Austin Chick. But when she got pregnant by her Gotham co-star Ben McKenzie, there was very little she could do to cover it up. And just like that, the cheating rumours were confirmed. Although the actress tried to shut down the allegations, according to a TMZ report, the divorce papers filed in 2015 by 
Austin show that he claimed that he was still sharing a bed with Morena when she conceived Mackenzie's baby. She did get a happy ending though and eventually gave birth to Mackenzie's daughter Frances in March of 2016, just two weeks before her divorce from Austin was finalized, and went on to marry Mackenzie in June the following year. But did she at least feel a little bad for sleeping with her co-star while she was married? Well, not really. In fact, she told People magazine that working with him on Gotham was wonderful. Quote, Ben's the sweetest. It's very nice to work with your significant other, especially when you're pregnant because you know you'll get some extra TLC and get taken care of. I mean, yeah, I guess that sounds nice if you can ignore the question of how they met. Number one, John Malkovich and Michelle Pfeiffer. The legendary actor John Malkovich caused intense scandal both on and off the screen when it came to filming 1998's Dangerous Liaisons with his co-star Michelle Pfeiffer. At the time, the actor had been married to actress Glenn Headley for six years, but that completely fell apart in the midst of his affair with Michelle. Interestingly enough, even the film's director, Stephen Frears, said, quote, Dangerous Liaisons is about betrayal and lies and relationships unraveling. It was one of those times where reality and art intersect. It was overwhelming to John. Even for a man who delights in bad behavior, that was a difficult time. Not to mention the fact that John's older brother, Danny, told Entertainment Weekly in 1993 that when the actor came home with Michelle, that that was the happiest that he had ever seen him. But even though John and his ex-wife got divorced in 1988, the affair didn't last long either, and they reportedly broke up not long after. But apparently Malkovich took the breakup very hard and reportedly cried for a whole year. The two of them must have really had something special because he told The Guardian in 2008, quote, It's hard to believe Michelle Pfeiffer ever said hello to me. I mean, if you can forget about the fact that he cheated on his wife, it's still romantic the way he talks about Michelle.